From PNC News, it's your host, Jolene Tovez. Hi, today I'm Jolene Tovez, and this is Coffee with the Candidates Double Shot. Joining us now is three term Senator Mary Torres, who is running for re election to the 36th legislature under the Republican ticket. Welcome, Senator. Thank you for joining us, half a day. So let's just get right down to it. You've been um, you've been three terms um, as a senator already, and uh, this will mark your first fourth term if you do uh, attain a seat in the 36th legislature. So you know, with everything that is happening on our island, the public health pandemic, what are some measures that you want to come out with uh, right off the bat um, if you do uh, gain re-election? What's important to do is address the, the issues right now that are most gripping our community. One is access to health care, continued access to health care. And also, I want to address what has been a long standing issue on Guam and something that I've been working on for the, the past year, which is how to address substance abuse and, and addiction. Um, right now, especially during the pandemic, a lot of people with addiction issues are not getting the treatment that they need, and, and you have people relapsing. But in addition to that, with all the stressors, there are people that um, will now fall prey to substance abuse just because of all the stressors that they're experiencing. So I, I believe that health care and substance abuse issues are what we have to uh, address first and foremost in the, in the new uh, term with the legislature. All right. Now let's talk a little bit more about about this uh, relapse. I believe, like nationally, it's like thirty four percent of those who are addicts um, have a chance of relapsing during this this pandemic. Um, now you mentioned trying to address that problem, but how how would you address it? Would it be more funding, more programs? What areas specifically will you address um, this relapse and addiction um, on our island? Well, I think first and foremost, those people that are seeking care need access to their care. And with the lockdown, they have not been able to get the treatment that they that they have been experiencing in the past pre-COVID. So that's one issue that we have to address is that bringing them again back into the services uh, for drug addiction and, um, and and working with the controlling it. But also there's, there's programs that, uh, and somewhat controversial, but there are programs that will enable through policy that will enable family members to bring other family members who have addiction problems and perhaps don't recognize it or don't want to admit that they need help to uh, Department of, of, of uh, uh, Behavioral Health for treatment and assessment. Because I, I think part of the problem is trying to, that we don't have policies uh, short of people turning themselves in where people can actually uh, civilly commit or refer people over for help. And I think that that's the sort of policy where many families are, are wanting to help that other family members so that, you know, they don't fall into these, these great ruts that have um, repercussions on the whole family structure. Um, and so, th so there are policies that in place that I've been working with um, behavioral health that can be made into law to address, you know, the everyday person that just needs an avenue to, to get help or to get others to get help. All right. Um, now, obviously, uh, mental health is a growing concern, but healthcare in general is also a growing concern for many island residents. Um, so what programs or plans do you have um, in mind to help our people um, stay healthy just as an overall community? Well, I think one of the, the most important things is access to health care. And so I've done a lot with nursing, for example, where uh, one of the, the laws that I, I authored was uh, full practice authority for the nurse practitioners, advanced registered nurse practitioners, so that they could then where someone doesn't have access to a doctor either because of cost or, um, uh, you know, or, or just uh, inability to do them. Nurses now have greater access to treat, to their full practice, their, their full training to treat people. So that was one law that I authored. Uh, another that we're working on is nurse licensure compact so that we have access to more nurses coming into Guam. But I think generally um, what we have to do is, is in order for people to, to, to be healthier, they need preventive medicine and preventive care. And that's where uh, shoring up programs like um, having more incentive for people to become 
either certified nurse assistants just to help with the nursing uh, services uh, for our community on the home front level. Um, and also in, in the hospitals is critical. All right. But you know, access is definitely the first step to, okay. to prevent greater um, health issues in the future. All right, thank you so much, Senator. Now, of course, um, healthcare is a big issue, like you mentioned, and the disparities in pay is also a big issue. And we'll talk about about that a little bit more later, but I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, you know, don't go anywhere. Up next, we have Kyle Mandipat from Power 98. Up next with a little bit uh, of more questionings on the lighter side. From Power 98, it's your host, Kyle Mandipat. Hop it, everybody, and welcome back to the Double Shot here on Coffee with the Candidates. Thank you, Jolene. Uh, and you know what, Jolene got really on a roll with all those great questions. We're gonna take that roll, we're gonna smash it and make it a pancake now. Of course, we're continuing our discussion with Senator Mary uh, towards this morning. Hop it, and thank you so much for having me, Senator. Off a day. Nice to see you, Kyle. It's great to see you. And you know what? You look so nice. Look at that festive background. You are just in an area and an aura of positivity, huh? Have to be. I'm telling you, that's the way it goes. And you know what? That brings me to my first question. Now, we've seen you on the legislative floor. We've seen you taking care of the people of the Guam. But I've got the chance to see you in a different, uh, you know, setting. I've got to see you on a soccer field before. And that's because those grandkids of yours are out and about on the soccer field. Now, have you played sports before like that or do you just support? I was grow I grew up in an era where there were no organized sports for little girls, if you can oh, believe it. Oh wow. So so my role with sports has always been as administrator, you know, helping with setting up the club and, and administering it. And I did coach uh, the under sixteen for a while when when I need to fill a gap. But um not for the most part I'm the I'm the uh, I'm just the the one that holds it all up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you do a great job. And, you know, it's one of those things to really see uh, you in Nana mode out there with the grandkids. I, I can really tell that the, the family is so important to you. You know what I mean? Um, during this whole uh, lockdown and isolation period, how have you been spending your time? Have you got a chance to hang with your grandkids? We've been uh, the support, actually, because my children... Um my adult children are all frontliners, so they've, they've oh. all had to go to work every single day, uh, one of whom is uh, an emergency room nurse wow. and also works in a clinic. So, so their kids have fallen to uh, my husband and I to care for, for the most part. So it's been, it's been a struggle. When they went back to school, uh, you know, things changed. Most of them stay at home now, but uh, a, few, a couple of them are here at the house. And... Uh, and when their parents come to pick them up, you know, there's family dinners every single night. So <laughs> I've been looking for an army of a dozen people every single night since COVID started. So, yeah, definitely not a mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Put that on your resume. Put cook, put soccer coach, now teacher. Look at that. Uh, it short order cook, too. Short yeah, or it has short to be a short order, order right? We're not waiting yeah. around, Nana. Come on, I'm hungry. That's awesome yeah. to hear. <laughs> and, you know, it really goes to show kind of, uh, you know, the different dynamic that we're able to see you in. Uh, what would you say, I guess, is, is one of the biggest contributors to, to you and your goals? I mean, like I said, you're out there helping the island. You've got families in mind. I noticed that as well. What's something that inspired you to think that way? Why, you know what I mean? I just was, I was just bred that way. You know, I was bred in a family where my parents all worked. I mean, my mother baked our bread. Uh, my dad used to whittle and carve. Every, every waking moment was a productive moment in our house. But mostly, you know, we were we were kind of raised with uh, the attitude that, hey, you know, if, if you can have help, if it's there, just do it. Don't wait to be asked. Um, don't wait for an invitation. So, you know, but mostly I I just I just enjoy life and, and I enjoy being outside. I, you know, I'm I'm always doing stuff and keeping busy because it feels good and I I quite honestly love being around people. It, it, there's nothing better than people watching in my book. There it's just, you go. just great joy and, and gratification. I love it. Now you have all these grandkids. Has your Zori throwing arm gotten better over the years? Or are you not one of those nanas? Because my grandma was a oh, Zori yeah. thrower like crazy. 
No way. I'm the one that they're all under my skirt, you know? So there's a thing in my house where I said to my husband, why, why is it that when they're fighting with each other, it's Nana. When they're scared, it's Nana. When they're excited, (laughs) Nana. When they're mad, Nana. Everything's Nana. So my, you know, my name is just all the time. I said, why can't they call you? (laughs) So I'm, I'm the, I'm the refuge. Uh, That's what it is. Is they, they just, uh, I have a soft spot spot for the kids and you know, if, if they could all climb in my bed and fall asleep there, that's where they're going to be. Oh, that's amazing. It's great to hear. And I'm glad that you're spending time with the kids during this uh, very, very tricky time uh, in our history. Um, Senator, we're going to get to our uh, community question now. We've had the opportunity to talk to so many people uh, who have watched and who are a part of the voting process. And one of them, by the name of Sheena, sent you this question. Okay. Okay, so the question is, what will you do to give us more recreational activities for families? Recreational f- uh, activities are so critical. And what I've always wanted for Guam was just access to the outdoors. You know, you don't need something so expensive, but if you can keep enough lifeguards at the beaches and more beaches open for families to go and just have leisurely activities, uh, bike paths, I think are a critical uh, Thing that's missing on Guam for families to exercise and just get out. But I think that that uh, organized sports is always a good thing, but it, it requires a lot of investment. But what we do have on Guam are great um, nature. They, we have great nature. We have trails that we can walk. We have uh, beaches that we can visit. So what we have to do is just shore those up, make them accessible make them clean and make them uh, safe for families to just come out because you really don't need much to just enjoy. Um, You just need a good place to go where you can park your car safely and uh, bring your kids out and not worry about them walking into anything dangerous or, you know, being attacked by stray dogs or anything like that. Wow. That was beautifully said. As a father of three who's both broke and wants to get skinny, I support that movement. Thank you so much for your time uh, today, Senator. We look forward to seeing your progression here on the road to the general election. You have a great day, okay? Welcome back to Coffee with the Candidates Double Shots. Joining us now is Speaker of the 35th Guam Legislature, Senator Tina Munya Barnes, who is seeking re election under the Democratic ticket. Welcome, Senator. Welcome. Half a day, Jolene. Thank so, you for having me. Yes, let's get straight down into it. Um, currently, the island is in a pandemic, a uh, public health emergency. And, and uh, throughout all of this, there has been a lot of criticism uh, in line with the quarantining procedures of all incoming travelers to the island. Um, restrictions have been eased, restrictions have been implemented, um, but what is your, your stance on um, whether or not these are actually the least restrictive measures in place uh, to address this, the rate of infection? Jolene, thank you for having uh, me ask that, uh, answer that question. I want to share with you that my grandson was quarantined for 14 days. And though it, it hurt me personally, I thought it was the right thing to do. I think uh, uh, in order for our people to be safeguarded and protected, we would need to test, test, and test. And though we don't have the authority like the other countries have around this region to close their borders, We have no control over that. So the next best thing was for the administration to put uh, quarantine measures in place. And you know what? Till this very day, it still shows that we are getting positive cases through travelers that are coming into Guam. So, you know, as much as it it literally uh, um, uh, affected my family emotionally, I want to say that I continue and I push we're pre-testing, and I think that we need to test, test, test. And I'm hoping that with the surgeon cells recommendation and others uh, with the medical advisory group that uh, when they come here and they get uh, at least quarantined for at least the, the required time of uh, five to six days, that they can get a test again. And if they're negative, they can finish the rest of the warranty period at home. So I think it's important that we still have some kind of 
protective measure in place uh, for quarantine for passengers coming in. All right. Now, during this whole entire pandemic, people have been looking at the budget. Where is the money going? Where should it go? Um, as a senator, if you had, uh, you know, uh, if you had control over where these fundings would go, where would you prioritize this, the, the money being spent? And would there be any cutbacks to government operations as far as those working from home or and still getting a full paycheck? You know, Geraldine, I think it's real important to, to realize that during this pandemic, uh, the health uh, and welfare of our community is of the utmost importance. So I would put the, uh, the resources back into public health, into the emergency process. Uh, I introduced Bill 400. I did not support the override because I realized that there is funding that needs to go to public health. Uh, I think that as we look at uh, recovering safely and the plans to recover, I think that health is at the most critical stage so that we can safeguard our community and putting money back into public health, into GMH, making sure that our medical community uh, uh, has the necessary tools that it needs to keep our islands safe. I think putting the resources into uh, public health is good, uh, is, would be the enough amalic way to get things started. And I, again, I'm, I'm hopeful that our colleagues could consider uh, going, um, uh, looking at Bill 400 as introduced today and give the resources to public health. And uh, um, we need to also look at giving tax breaks to our small business community. This this 35th Guam legislature, my colleagues have helped in uh, giving zero to 3% to small businesses under 250,000. But I think there could be opportunities that we can look at is giving uh, uh, breaks to our small business communities here because they are the ones that sustain our community. They ain't going anywhere. They are the backbone of our economic industry. Uh, we uh, are trying to revive on uh, tourism. Uh, I can also look at uh, the medicinal uh, cannabis component of that and bringing a new industry here. But until then, what can we do to open up our small businesses and give back to our health because we are in this pandemic today. All right. Thank you so much, Senator Tina Munoz Barnes. Well, don't go anywhere. Up next is Kyle Mandipat from Power 98 with a little bit of questions on the lighter side for Senator um, Barnes to answer. And we'll be back. Hi everybody and welcome back to Coffee with the Candidates Double Shot. I'm Kyle Mandipat and we're continuing our conversation with Speaker Tina Munya Barnes. Half a day, Speaker. Half a day, many of God's blessings to you oh, and, and to, you to as well. the people of Guam. You stop it. Now, you know, we've had the opportunity uh, to speak several times over the course of the many years of, uh, of your great service to the island. And I think that this is kind of one of those things that is just going to be so easy because you're so, I mean, you're the speaker. You get to speak a lot. You know what I mean? This is probably like <laughs> second nature to you. So I'm just... Yeah, I'm going to dive into the hard question first. Now, Auntie, you know, a lot of us have the, 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 the memories of growing up here in Guam. That's really what pushes a lot of people to continue to work towards the good of the island and to, to make things better. Do you have a favorite memory of, of the island as a child or, or you growing up? Yeah, the beauty, the beauty and the cleanliness and the pristine of our island and the, the way our, our people... Uh, come together and, and just share everything. Uh, my father taught us that Munya means loving, caring, and sharing, and to spread the inafamalic uh, uh, way of life, uh, in, you know, inafamalic to make things good, but to share everything. And growing up, uh, we were able to do a lot of things together, going to the beaches, going to, to family gatherings, and that is something that has been missed by a lot of families. It's not being to go out into the parks, the beaches, to family gatherings, uh, to christenings, mm -hmm. weddings, uh, um, and even e even uh, uh, as we celebrate those who who leave the earth to go into eternal life, not even having the opportunity to to 
see our loved ones who passed uh, for the last time. That has been very difficult. But growing up, it, it was about all of us coming together as a family and going to the different gatherings. Definitely. I agree. And I think that if we ever needed um, like a membership card to show that you grew up on Guam, I think you have it in the background of you right now. I saw the Santa Maria. She's back there. Yeah. That proves it. That's all yeah. I need, girl. That's what you need to get your local discount at the store. <laughs> and I want you to know that with everything and anything is possible with our God. And of course, the Blessed Mother who always keeps us together and always holds her in the palm of our hands, there of her go. hand. I did a That's Zoom meeting. Always I, been blessed. Uh -huh, I agree. I did a Zoom meeting last week and it was somebody in States and they're like, what's that picture behind you? I said, That's the last supper, boy. I'm at my dinner table. <laughs> What are you expecting, <laughs> yeah. you know? So I think it's great. And I think it really does tell a lot about our people. And I think that, you know, like I said, with you and your, your vast experience and, and uh, being the speaker, I, I had to ask this question. If you had the chance to speak to anybody, past or present, living or dead, who would that person be? You could pick their brains. You could just catch up with somebody. Who has to be that person for you? It would be my father, Bill Munya. He truly... Um shared with us the value of Munya meaning loving, caring, and sharing. And he left us real soon. He had a massive heart attack. And if it was one thing I could ask was for him, for us to party with him together and he could play his music because his, his legacy still lives on, just to see him and talk to him one more time would be great. I think it would be a family event for all of us Yes, I, I, I'm just happy just thinking about about him and, and knowing that he gave so much to the community, but he taught us the values of respect and about giving and sharing and caring for one another. And you know that by our extended family. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> getting, no, getting a you got me. Girl. Here. Auntie, you got me too. <laughs> Hold on. Stop it. <laughs> okay. Now, our last question for this round is actually going to come from a member of the community. And it comes from Chelsea. Chelsea had this question for you. Okay, Auntie. So the question is, what is your one wish for the island of Guam? In a famalic would be the answer learning what I've learned from, from growing up as a family, learning about even being a part of the Ina Famalik organization earlier, Ina Famalik, having all of us come together as one because together we can overcome all the atrocities that have happened uh, to not just our island of Guam, but to the world. Doing things together, coming and making sure that, that we work together because together we are stronger. And I think uh, that would be it. In one word, I would say in a family. I love it. I love it. And you know what? It's great to have the chance to talk with you uh, as we continue our road to the general election. And I wish you the best of luck. And I encourage everybody uh, to get out there yeah. and make sure that they take advantage of their opportunity to vote. We've got so many great candidates that have had the opportunity to come through here on Coffee with the Candidates. And I do want to thank you again, Speaker Barnes, for taking the time to join us on this round. Thank you. Thank you, and God bless you. God bless the people of Guam. I'm number five on the Democrat side. There Please you go. consider me with your powerful gift of vote. Thank we, you. We love it. Thank Please you. Thank you God so bless. much. And for everybody else who's tuning in, like I said earlier, that's going to do it for this round. But don't worry, we still got a couple rounds left in the Rolodex behind me. Okay, so sit tight. Continue to keep your eyes peeled as we continue our trek towards the general election. Coffee with the Candidates, double shot. On behalf of everybody here at Coffee with the Candidates, and Ms., uh, for Ms. Jolene Tovis, I'm Kyle Mandipat saying have a great day.